उमा ज्ञान थिमिनंदस्या ज्ञानंगना शिलाकाया चक्षुन मिलिताम जैनतास मायसी गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मरो विष्णुम् श्तापिताम जैनबुद्धले श्वायम् रूप कदाम एवं तदंति स्वापदे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभुनित्य नंदा अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासरी गो वक्ते बिंदुम् हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 नाम हरे नाम In Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, by our Rasa Acharya, Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, <clears throat> which our beloved spiritual master very mercifully, in the very beginning of the movement, when we hardly understood <clears throat> the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, <clears throat> Prabhupada translated Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu into the Nectar of Devotion, <clears throat> which is a summary study of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And that is the science of devotion. Um, in this process, Rupa Goswami describes and Prabhupada elaborates, there's five essential activities which we perform and which Srila Prabhupada has very intelligently and almost mystically um, given to us in the form of our morning program, really, <laughs> incorporated these five essential elements. <clears throat> One is uh, well, chanting Hare Krishna, either speaking or hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, worshiping the deity, <clears throat> living in or um, visiting a holy place, not London. <clears throat> when Prabhupada first arrived in London, you know, the reporter asked him, how do you like London? And Prabhupada said, London is hell. But now it's becoming Vaikuntha by your presence and your kirtan. <clears throat> and number five, which I'd like to speak on today, is sadhu sangha. It means the association of devotees. This is, you could say, a most potent process out of the five other processes because Srila uh, Bhaktiv Thakur once described that um, Krishna consciousness is contagious. It's contagious. Just like, I don't want to bring nightmares back to you, but remember we had COVID? <laughs> COVID. Bye-bye, COVID. So how did we catch COVID? <laughs> through association, <laughs> even through sadhu sangha. <laughs> you go to a marriage, you go to a namhata program, and next, two days later, oh, COVID. But in a good sense, Krishna consciousness um, is contagious. When we're living in the association of devotees, what's, what, what is happening? Shravanam, kirtanam, Krishna shmaranam. Our main process is hearing and chanting. That's why they're the first of the ninefold process. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Shmaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Bandam, Dasim, Sakyam, Atmanivedanam. That's number nine. It's the last because it's the hardest. Fully surrender. But Shravanam, Kirtanam. Just think about how Prabhupada organized our program. We get up in the morning. Uh, the Brahma Muhurta, before the sun has risen, most people are sleeping. It's my favorite time to drive around London because there's no traffic. We drove to the Eurostar the other day to go to France, like 2.30 in the morning. I was like, wow, there's nobody here. I love it. <clears throat> so we get up, the Brahma Muhurta, and first thing we do, samsara dava nalalila loka. We chant the glories of Krishna's representative, our spiritual master, our, our Guru Maharaj, by whose mercy we have connection with Prabhupada, the master at whose feet all masters sit. So we, we sing, and then we go into the Panchatattva mantra, then we go into the morning melody uh, for Hare Krishna, and then we have Tosi Puja, and we're again singing, again dancing, and then we have japa, more kirtan, type of kirtan. Then guru puja, 
then a wild kirtan, whopper stomper. <clears throat> I remember one time we had a kirtan at Bhaktivedanta Manor. Kripa Moya, myself, Bhakti Bringa Govinda Maharaj, some heavyweights. You know, I wasn't heavyweight. <clears throat> and I was singing. And, you know, I kept singing and singing and singing and singing. And the temple president came over and said, Amar, you've got to stop now. It's time for class. I kept singing and singing and singing and singing. Maharaj, stop, it's time for class. Singing and singing. Maharaj, it's past prashadam time. Devotees are hungry. Singing and singing. 11 o'clock? I'm not kidding. So I stopped. Jano Mishnu Nobody left. We were perspiring, sweating. Whoa, welcome. Whoa. So the temple president said, Maharaj, thank you, but there was no class. I said, that was my class. <laughs> we all remember that. Whopper, stopper, cure. So this is what we do. We, uh, on his commentary on Chaitanya Shikshamrita, um, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he says this is the primary duty of a Gaudiya Vaishnava is to chant Hare Krishna and spread the glories of chanting Hare Krishna. We have many dharmas, many duties. But as Gaudiyas, this is our duty. We chant Hare Krishna and we distribute the holy names. <clears throat> so that's what happens when you're with devotees. We don't come together and talk about mundane news, politics, frivolous sports. We don't care who won the, what's it called? Huh? Champion League. <laughs> Manchester on United? <laughs> Manchester State, sorry. I'm full blooded American. <laughs> we, these things are, of course, we're not ignorant of, of this world, but we love to chant Hare Krishna. We love to. When you love someone, you want to glorify them. Isn't it? If you love someone, you want to glorify them. So, Maybe we don't have that prema yet, but through our acharyas, we understand that is the goal. And to get to that goal, chant, chant, chant. Minimum 16 rounds. Uh, one of my god sisters was getting uh, initiated, and she came up to the Vyasasana, and Prabhupada said, so what are the four regulative principles, and how many how, rounds, uh, minimum, will you chant every day? Srila Prabhupada, no meat eating, no intoxication, no illicit sex, no gambling. And I promised to chant a minimum of 16 rounds every day. So Papa leaned over. She's right there. Why only a minimum 16 rounds? She said, okay, Prabhupada, I'll chant more. <laughs> minimum means what? There's a difference between minimum and maximum. It's just logic, right? Minimum, maximum, heat, cold, yes, no. It's a duality, minimum, maximum. So if you're really hungry and you eat a minimum, you won't be. <laughs> but if you're hungry and you have, you have maximum, your appetite is satisfied. So lolium is called greed. We have to have this greed for advancing in Krishna consciousness. We develop it by chanting. We have to become attracted. It takes some time. Therefore, Rupa Goswami prays. As young boys are attracted to young girls in Padyavali, and young girls are attracted to young boys, with the same intensity, but in a transcendental way, my Lord, met, let me be attracted to your devotional service. It's so sweet. It's so sweet. So, Sangha, these things, you know, it's hard to do anything alone in this world. Maybe sometimes we like to get away and be by ourselves in our room, get away from it all, but really when we want to enjoy, we go out and we find friends and we find people in congregation. Fortunately, we have the right people, the right congregation, but you want to be where we're um, social animals. So therefore, Krishna Varnam Tusha Krishnam Shangupanga Shaparshadam Yagnai Sankatam Praya Yashanti Hi Shume Yashaha It's described in the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam. Mahaprabhu's appearance is described 11th canto, that he who appeared in a previous age, Tupura Yuga, bluish black like a monsoon cloud, has now appeared in the age of Kali, 
in a golden form. How can you recognize him? He's surrounded by his devotees, all chanting very loudly, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. It's easier in association. We're trying to make a point. What is our point? <clears throat> my dear Lord, my dear energy of the Lord, Brindavaneshwari Shrimati Radhika, please engage me in your service. I've been bereft of service. Brahmanda Brahmati Konya Bhagavanji, Guru Krishna Prashad, Bhai Bhakti Lak Bish. According to Kaviraj Goswami, we've been bereft of service since time immemorial. That service is our life and soul to Hari Guru and Vaishnava. So now we're finally waking up and we realize, I want seva. Not to me, I, me, and mine, but to Radhe Sham. That's where my heart rests, with Radhe Sham. So that's how we chant. When we're chanting, that's what we're saying. It's more than a mantra. This Hare Krishna mantra is more like a prayer. Like I said the other day, and I say many times, when they asked Prabhupada once again, Swamiji, what does it mean, the Hare Krishna mantra? So we were expecting again, my dear Lord, my dear energy of the Lord, pleasing, but Prabhupada said this time he paused. What does it mean, this Hare Krishna mantra? It means, my friend, my friend, my friend. And I don't have tattoos but that's etched in my heart. I have a stone-like heart, right? So you can, you can etch things. And etched in stone means something that's really definite. My friend, my friend. This is what it means to chant, not mechanically, with some feeling. But I'm not a lover of God. How can I call God my friend? How can I call God my lover? But you can be grateful that Chaitanya Krishna in this form of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his representative Srila Prabhupada and his devotees have picked you up from the ocean of birth and death. The, the analogy of an ocean is very good because it's very wide and very deep. So this material world is it's full, chock full, we say in America, chock full of miseries. Dukalaima Shashvatam, Krishna says, temporary, full of suffering. So our saviors, the Vaishnavas, Guru Maharaj, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they plucked us out. Pluck. And if we fall back down, it's called bloop. That devotee blooped. Have you ever heard that term? Oh, she blooped. Or, you know, right? Where did he go? Oh, sorry to say blooped. You find, you're not going to find blooped in the Webster's Dictionary or Britannica Encyclopedia or the Internet. Blooped. That was Prabhupada's word. He coined a lot of words. Uh, blooped. So he said, someone said, um, Prabhupada such and such has left the movement. Prabhupada said, oh, they blooped. Somebody went, excuse? What, Prabhupada? Prabhupada said, just like you drop a rock in the ocean, it goes bloop. So they blooped back into the ocean of material existence. So don't do that. If the ship is a little rocky, you know, you're getting seasick, some problems in Krishna consciousness, some problems in the movement, don't jump ship. Don't ever leave. Because where else is there to go but in the ocean of material existence? So stay. Even if it's a little rocky, you stay. So someone, you're drowning right? You're drowning. Someone comes in a rowboat. And, you know, I don't know if you know what it's like to drown. When I was a young man, when I was 16, 17, most summers I worked as a lifeguard on one of the beaches in San Francisco. I was a lifeguard. I had to train, swim, you know, etc. And um, we, I, many times I saved, I think, uh, 17 or 18 people I saved. At first it was like a challenge, but it became really easy because so many people didn't know how to swim and the waves were so big. So I'd have to swim out and, and, and get them. You go behind them, 
because if they, you get them for the front, they drag you down. So you go behind and you put your arm around their chest and their heads here and you swim backwards. That's how you, just in case you ever have to save somebody. So, um, and people were always very thankful. In fact, a few years ago, I, I got a letter from someone who I'd saved from drowning in the San Francisco Bay Area. Still remember. All I did was pull him up a few inches above the water and took them to the, to the, to the, the beach. So grateful. So similarly, our uh, friends and family members, our teachers, our Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, our Krishna, even if they just lifted us a little bit, we're, just, we're still beginners. Still a little bit, we can be grateful that we're saved from this vicious, horrible material existence. So you can chant with feeling. It's not prema. Your tears aren't flowing from your eyes like torrents of rain. But gratitude is something that's, you know. My mom used to say, whenever I get a present, she'd say, young man, say thank you. Man, say thank you. Or you're not going to get anything again. Thank you. You won't get anything. You won't get any Christmas presents. Thank you, Mom. Love you. So if you get a gift and not appreciative, you can hardly expect more. So just to get liberation from material existence, as long as we're following the principles, as long as we're chanting, we are not under the influence of the material energy. We are technically mukti. We're liberated. But we want more than liberation. We want bhakti. We want devotion. So we can be grateful. You can chant with feeling, like you know Madhava, Madhava, our famous kirtanera. He's always saying, chant from the heart, chant from the heart. This is what it means, we can chant with some feeling. That's bhajan. Bhajan is done with feeling, it's never done mechanically, it has to be done with feeling. And to appeal to Krishna alone, okay, that was the process for thousands of years. The Hare Krishna mantra has been around since Satya Yuga. There's always been Bhajan Anandis in the forest chanting Hare Krishna. Mahaprabhu made it authorized. He made it the Yuga Dharma. But the mantra has been around, but they were chanting alone. Mahaprabhu recommended Sadhu Sangha. We come together and we chant. Why? Because in any kirtan party, you're hearing everybody chanting, right? There's always devotees more advanced than you. You have to accept that. That's humility. Actually, an advanced devotee, he thinks everyone's more advanced than me. So he wants to serve everyone. This humility is the crown jewel of a devotee's qualities. There's always devotees more advanced. There's, we have friends, right? Who has friends? Raise your hands. Okay. We have friends. That we, real friends, right? I saw a, um, a bumper sticker in America last year. It said, real friends don't let their friends eat meat. So I said, yeah. My friends, we don't do sinful things. We, um, chant we, we, all, we do things we like to do together. We all like to chant. We like Pishadam. We like the Bhagavatam. We like Vrindavan. So we have friends like that. So making close friendship with our friends. So in this association, we, and many of you were born into devotee families. God bless. You're born into devotee families. Wow. Krishna says in the Gita that the unsuccessful yogi, he'll take birth in a family of merchants, rich people, so he doesn't have to struggle for life. He can get back to chanting. Or he takes birth in a family of transcendentalists. Verily, such a birth is uh, rare. How many of you were born in devotee families? Lali? And you were born with a, with a twin. Oh my God. You're so lucky. Your best friend is your sister. You were probably some yogis in the Himalayas in your last birth, chanting Hare Krishna. And you took birth in a devotee family. The point is that we have a culture, we have a society, we have a movement, we have... So it's, it's good, you know, chanting alone, okay, it's better to chant because we hear the chanting of advanced devotees, our friends are chanting, and we hear younger devotees chanting, but still they're chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. 
Cheto dharpana marjanam. All the dirty things in the heart, all those obstacles between us and Radha and Krishna. In due course of time. So these programs like Pandavasena, this is a program that should go on for 10,000 years. You can publish that, boys. Into Duna Swami came to Pandavasena. He said, this Pandavasena should go on for 10,000 years. Okay? Who's Pandavasena? Raise your hand. There's no Pandavasena. One, two. Everyone else has guessed. <laughs> Pandavasena, all which I were talking about. Us. <laughs> so this is what it means. We, we come together, and it's just like a mass appeal. I give the example sometimes if there's some, something in the city that people don't like, I don't know, they, whatever, they raise the taxes. So there's a, a meeting of all the city officials at the town hall, and you go down there, and you know, the windows open, you start screaming, I don't like this law. You know, you're going to increase the taxes. You guys are just, and they just shut the window on you. But you go down with the movement, like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, did with the Chan Kazi. I'm going to, is it Brighton or Bristol where I'm going tomorrow? Okay, I thought they were the same. They're not the same, right? Okay. And I'm going to give a lecture on this uh, tomorrow if you want to come. A lecture on the, uh, the first act of civil disobedience where Lord Chaitanya took his Sangaton party and you know, he went to the Chan Kazi's house. Are you going to stop the Sangaton movement? No way. Hoodie, there's no hoodie. He's shaking. It's a two hour lecture. It's really amazing. Come to Bristol. <laughs> okay, it's bright, it's bright, it's bright. It's not, it's not like England, it's bright. Of course it's bright now. So you, they'll, you, know, you go and you complain, but if you go with a big you know, group of people, you know, citizens, an act of civil disobedience, we don't want to pay more taxes. And you're screaming, then they'll invite the leaders to come up. I've seen it happen when I was young. I was in many civil disobedience movements, um, you know, how they were treating our African-American people in my country in the 1960s. You know, we were young white boys, but they, the African-American boys were our buddies. We did sports together. We hung out together. So, you know, we, I was in the civil disobedience, and the cops would come and beat us, and, you know, but our message was heard. And now, black lives matter to some degree in America because we went together. So we're appealing to Krishna in the morning. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare... Not Ram Ram. No. There's 32 syllables. If you take out the Ram A, you leave out something, and the prescription doesn't work. Like if you get a prescription for antibiotics for nine days, you take them for five days, you get better, then you throw them away, it'll come back, the infection. My god brother Pusa Krishna, he was Swami at that time, he since left this world to join Prabhupada. He um, was sitting chanting Japa with Prabhupada one day. Like, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Prabhupada said, stop that nonsense. <laughs> like, whoa. <laughs> what, Prabhupada? Stop that nonsense. What? You, it's Rama. Krishna's name is Rama. That's the proper pronunciation of the Mahamantra, the Yuga Dharma, the process for this age. So to put uh, Pusa Krishna Maharaj told me he never, ever, once in his life, at, chanted Ram Ram. Rama! You hear him chant. I heard him chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama! Hare Rama! <laughs> He's, he'd scare us. You get a personal instruction from your guru, it's like you hold on to that for life, right? So, we're making an appeal, and I'm stressing the importance again, right? Chanting japa, 16 rounds a minimum, because there's so much benefit. The pollution goes away from the heart. The material desires, which are the source of the sinful reactions, they're just uprooted and thrown to the 
twelfth dimension, and that little golden seed of bhakti, prema, finally, without all the weeds, it can grow as a healthy plant. And the watering process is the same thing. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. I better not make a mistake here. Rama, Rama, Hare. So when we all come together like that, then it's easier for Krishna to hear. Just like, you know, you go to the city hall, hello, goodbye. You come with a lot of people, what is it? So this is why Krishna Varnan Tushak Krishnam Shangopanga Shaparshadam Yagnai Sankatan Prayari Shanti He Shu Shaha. That incarnation, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's not so easy to spot because Krishna came as a devotee, not as God. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radhe Krishna Nahi Anga. Kaviraj Goswami says in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Radhe Krishna Nahi Anga. Originally the Lord was one, Narayan, 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 South India, Narayan, Om Narayan. But for his transcendental pleasure, Ladini Shakti, his pleasure potency, Vrindavaneshwari, Srimati Radharani. The Lord became two. Again, because how can you enjoy alone? You want others. So the perfect person to enjoy was Radha. So they're that divine couple forever. But for the purpose of delivering the fallen souls in Kali Yuga, they became one in the personality of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But he didn't come as God. Like, why? Prabhupada explains if he came as God and wanted everyone to follow him because of the nature of this age, everyone wants to become God. The Mayavadis, they want to become God. So they would follow you know, Krishna as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to become God. So he tricked everybody. He, be- he came as a devotee. Lord Chaitanya is a devotee. He, he, initially, no one could realize that he was God. He was Nimai Pandit, the best scholar on the block, on the block teasing the Brahmins in the water and all kinds of so-called frivolous activity. One day, he declared the Sankirtan movement and the chanting of Hare Krishna as a Yuga Dharma and revealed himself as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So he didn't come initially as God. He came as, as a devotee. And he's the one that tells us what we do. Father knows best. When I was a kid in America, we had a program called Father Knows Best. My parents made me watch every single series of Father for five years because we were taught to be good boys and always do what Daddy said. It was helpful, actually. Father, Father knows best. So the Supreme Father is Krishna. He's the seed-giving Father of all living entities. He's our dad, so we're all brothers and sisters. That's how a sadhu sees. Vidya vinaya sampane, brahmani gapihastani, sumichava sapakicha, pandita samadarshanaha. A devotee sees everyone equally. Not the body, not the sex, not the color, not anything. As Krishna's servant. So... Uh, this vision comes gradually with, with Krishna consciousness. So when we come together and we chant like that very loudly, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Na. Krishna will listen. You good dharma. In every age, because people are different. Every decade, every century, people are different. So what to speak of every yuga? You're not like your grandparents and your great grandparents and you know your ancestors in this great country of England. You're different. So every age is different. So there's a different process of self-realization in every age. Satya, Treta, Dupura, even Kali Yuga. There's really no hope, but we get special mercy. <laughs> Actually, that's what Rupa Goswami realized. When he first saw Chaitanya Mahaprabhu at Rama Kali, he was wor- working in the government there, Nawab Hussein Shah with Rupa Goswami. They were forced into entertainment or to the uh, employment there. And out of his causeless mercy, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was on his way from Jagannath Puri to Vrindavan. Straight line, beeline. But he went like this. <laughs> because up there were his devotees. 
And his devotees loved Krishna more than anyone has ever been loved before. And Krishna loves his devotees more than anyone's ever been loved before. So that, that love's like a magnet. It, it draws Krishna and his devotees together. So Mahaprabhu went to see Rupa and Sanatan. He never met them. Of course, in the spiritual world, they're his manjaris. They're his intimate manjaris, Rupa and Sanatan. Bhukoswami's Rupa Manjari. So they know him, but you know they were separated. So Mahaprabhu comes into the Ram Kali and Rupa Goswami sees him. And from his heart, from his heart onto his tongue, on his lips, manifests a most beautiful shloka, which for us reveals this divine uh, personality, Radhe Sham, combined together, like who could understand it? It's so esoteric. One becomes two, two becomes one. Like, oh, I don't get that. But it becomes revealed through our acharyas. What we can't understand is made very simple by their words. That's the meaning of acharya. They explain the complicated Vedas in such a way that even, you know, people in Kali Yuga, I get it. I'm going to become a devotee. I'm going back home, back to Godhead. Usually reserved for Brahmanas in Vedic age. Kolo Sutta Samvan. Even lower than Sudras, Malaysias, and Yavanas. They can become fully Krishna conscious by the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Rupa, he saw that, and for our benefit, I mean, it could be a symphony, you know, with all different types of beautiful instruments. The demigods, they could come down, 33 million demigods, with all those instruments. We don't even know the instruments they have. Just like Prabhupada told us one time, you don't know the real color of Krishna. You need premanjani charity bhakti velo chenina. You need eyes covered with the salve of love. Then you can see the spiritual tone of Krishna's body. It's not blue like we see blue. There's an infinite variety of colors in the spiritual world. It's infinite. But with material eyes, you can't see. We get an idea Krishna's blue like this. So Rupa Goswami, th through his mercy, he revealed this very esoteric personality. The one became two, became one. Because Krishna wanted to understand Radharani's love for him, he was the object of the love, so he had to take the position of the lover. It's just like very esoteric. But basically, he came to introduce this mantra. To who? To people of London. You walk around London, well, I mean, with all due respect, you know. You walk around New York, you know, asphalt jungles, with the wild animals eager to eat meat, fornicate, gamble, speculate. I don't want to get too heavy here. Um, he comes and what does he give? Braj Bhakti. Okay, love of God. There's so many, our dear Christian brothers and sisters, Muslim brothers and sisters. Jewish brothers and sisters, they understand the goal. We offer our deepest respects. But how can you love God? How can you love someone unless you know something about them? What's the impetus of love? How she walks, how she talks, how she sings, how she dresses, how he speaks, how he works, how he smiles, the details. So we have that in Christian consciousness. We know as much has been revealed about Krishna, we can actually love him because he's so amazing, he's all attractive. So, not only that, but not just love of God, but Braj Bhakti. Not awe and reverence, like Vaikuntha. Sir, yes sir! Like when we were in the military and we had to re respond to our lieutenant or our general, he said, do you understand? We didn't just say yes sir, we, sir, yes sir! Whenever I got stopped by a policeman in America doing Sankirtan, I say, sir, yes, sir. Oh, you were in the military? I'm sorry, you can go back. You can distribute your books. <laughs> it's like when I go to Islamic countries, when I get to Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, Dakistan, I'm not dressed like this, but I come in. What are you doing in our country? Alak, bala, humrilah. Salam alaikum. There is no God but God, and Muhammad is his prophet. Come right in, sir. So, 
Namo Mahabhadanaya Krishna Prem Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Nande Gold Shena. This is, this is the same person who appeared again it, it, previously. It's bluish, but now he's golden color. Uh, it's a sannyasi, and and he's distributing braj prem, braj bhakti, amala bhakti, everything for Krishna, nothing for me like gopis. And if you give everything to Krishna, he'll give everything to you. He'll give his very self to you. Pure devotional service is not. It's rarely achieved, pure devotional service, because you get Krishna, you capture Krishna. And Krishna doesn't let himself, you know, be controlled just by anyone and everyone. That bhakti has to be pure, 24 karat gold, prem bhakti. It's rarely attained. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's giving that bhakti. You can become Krishna's friend, wrestle with him in the sands of Raman Reti. You can beat him up. And you can say to him, what kind of big man are you, Krishna? I beat you up. The intimacy of love. Krishna is controlled by the love of his devotees. Radha doesn't do what Krishna says. Krishna does what Radha says because she has the highest love for Krishna. That intimacy where you can play with Krishna, joke with Krishna, swim with Krishna, nothing material, it's a transcendental relationship, that's not available in Vaikuntha. Sir, yes, sir, Narayan, Narayan, Narayan. It's Krishna also, and Krishna's devotees, but generally it's understood that the followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gaur Bhaktas, Nitai Gaura Hriva, Hriva, they're all aspiring for Manjari Bhav. They're aspiring to, for that mood of the Manjari. Not everyone will attain it because the world, spiritual world is full of variety. Krishna likes it like that, but generally that's the understanding. Just like, why did Prabhupada give us that song which we sing every morning before Bhagavatam class? Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Dana Balaba Girivara Dadi. They don't sing that in the Gaudiya Math. It's written by Bhaktivinoda Thakur, but in Gaudiya Math it was considered too intimate. Prabhupada is putting us in the fast lane. He wants us to understand. Honest where we're at, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, not X, Y, element, of whatever it was, I forget. You know, when you get older, you forget a few things. I forgot the alphabet, the first thing I learned. It's very advanced, but we know who we are and we know where we're going. That's the point. We know who we are and we know where we're, where we're going. Prabhupada um, in his introduction in the Krishna book, you know, who's read Krishna book? I mean, everybody's read Krishna book. It seems like, when I first started reading, I thought it was fairy tales, but it's absolute truth. And Prabhupada said in the introduction that my disciples, when they reach the stage of vipralamba bhav, will reach the stage of intense separation from Krishna. He said, this book will give them solace. So it's not that Prabhupada didn't speak about these things. Prabhupada gave us everything. But step by step, we don't jump over. Step by step, we go. It's there. So that's there in that prayer by Rupa Goswami. You, you're Krishna, and, and you're coming to the, this place, the darkness of ignorance, Kali Yuga, <laughs> where everything's deteriorating day by day. Month by month, year by year, it's becoming literally like patal loka at the end. You're coming here and you're giving the topmost process to the most fallen people? Like, what is that? That is you, Mahaprabhu. You are so merciful. So technically, we're Gora Bhaktas. Yes, Radhagokulananda, Radhagokulananda, Radisham in Hungary. But to get the mercy of Radha and Krishna, we need the mercy of Garanga. We're Gora Bhaktas. Therefore, the capital of, of our headquarters of our movement is in Mayapur. That Sankatam movement is spread out from Mayapur. That's our headquarters. We think that's our, our home. 
We want to be pure devotees of, of Radhe Sham, just like Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his Navadam Mahatmya. He talks about, there's a beautiful prayer to Lord Nishringadev. He's glorifying Nishringadev in so many ways. Then he says, I'm wallowing on the doorstep of Nishringa's palace, asking that beautiful lion-like God to remove all the anarthas on the path of developing my love for Radha and Krishna. That's why we worship Nishringadev. Protection, yes. Protection from illusion. We're worshiping Nishringadev to pull out all those nasty desires. He's here, he's there everywhere, he's in the heart, so we can develop love for Radha Shah. That's our goal. Us little people of Kali Yuga, Prabhupada said one time, Lord Ramachandra, he conquered Lanka, he conquered Ravana and his hordes of Rakshashas with monkeys and bears. And we all went, ha, 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 ha. He conquered Lanka with what? Monkeys and bears. And Prabhupada said, so I am conquering the world with my disciples. And I'm thinking, oh, I'm a monkey or a bear. It's the most amazing thing. We have the opportunity for developing Braj Bhakti by following Lord Chaitanya. Braj Bhakti means love for Radha Sham. So you can't get the love for Radha and Krishna without the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. And you can't get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya without getting the mercy of Lord Nityananda. These two brothers have risen like the sun and the moon dissipating the darkness of the age of Kali. You can't get the mercy of Garanga without the mercy of Nitai. And Prabhupada said to get the mercy of Nitai, you have to go out and preach to Jagai and Madhai. Voila. That's the formula. That's how you make advancement. This is a movement. It's meant to spread. Everyone has a little part to play, some big, some small, but if it's Bhakti, Krishna accepts it all. If you want Braj Bhakti, you know, a lot of talk, you know, Rasika, Bhakti, okay, then go out on the street corner and chant Hare Krishna. Don't go to Radha Kund. That's not, that's a place for very, very, very advanced souls. We can visit, we can bathe, sprinkle some water on our head, pray to Radhika. But if we want to end up in Radha Kund in the spiritual world, go out on Sankirtan. That's what Vaisheshika Prabhu is probably saying right now at the manor. <laughs> And you know, Jai Pataka Maharaj, he's the embodiment of that mood of Nityananda. He's practically crippled, but he's going everywhere preaching. I'm like, how does he do it? He can't even brush his own teeth. He's crippled. They brush his teeth, they comb his hair, they bathe him, they dress him. But he's traveling all over the world, and when he gives a lecture, it's right spot on. His mind is so clear. All glories to Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj, all glories to Vaisheshika Prabhu. So this is a movement, and we come together in a congregation like this. We're appealing to Krishna. Mass demonstration here, he's hearing it. What are we praying for? We're praying for service. And what kind of service do we want? What kind of service did Lord Chaitanya ask us to do? He said, one day my holy name will be spread all over the world, every town and village. You don't think he couldn't have done it? <laughs> he's God. He created all the universes. He's maintaining them. He's destroying them. <laughs> it's not difficult for him. He could have done it. But he left it for us. Why? Because every morning we're asking for service. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare. I told my disciples on many occasions that Prabhupada was walking on the beach uh, in um, what was Bombay, because if you, you have to use the word, the city's name as it was known at that time. We don't say Mumbai, we say Bombay. So Prabhupada was walking on Juhu Beach in Bombay, as he used to do when he was there. And um, they're walking along, and it was, you know, whenever we were with Prabhupada on morning walks, I went on morning walks in Geneva and Paris and Rome. We, it was so fun because we could ask questions, you know, not in an official way. Prabhupada, like it was so, Prabhupada would give the answers. More relaxed mood. So one day what he said, Prabhupada, if Lord Chaitanya is God, then why didn't he just spread the Sankirtan movement all over the world when he was here? Or listening. What's the answer? So Prabhupada stopped. 
put his cane in the sand, put his head like this. Why didn't Lord Chaitanya spread the Sankirtan movement all over the world? Because he wanted me to do it. <laughs> and we want to help Prabhupada. And that's how you make advancement. We make, okay, we chant our rounds, we go to the mountain, we, go our, we really make advancement by blessings. It's all by blessings. Yasha Prashad, Bhagava Prashad, Yasha Prashad, Nagati Gutopi. By pleasing our spiritual master who knows how to engage us in all devotional activities, we make advancement. And by displeasing him, our advancements curtail. It's pretty simple. It doesn't take a lot. You know, Krishna says, offer me with love a fruit, a flower, a leaf. These things I'll accept. So you don't have to be a Maharaj, you know, traveling around the world, writing diaries, and, uh, this big program, that program. You can um, cook an apple pie for your Guru Maharaj. You can cook it. Sri Leka, my disciple, she's 83. She, I went to see her and said, Guru Maharaj, I can't do anything. I said, look, I can't live without your apple pies. You've been cooking those apple pies for me for 30 years. You're one of my first disciples. I, that's why I come to London. Oh, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> so she's probably going to see this uh, video. Sri Lanka, I love your apple pies. You can just sit in the kitchen in a chair because you're old. Just stir the apple pie. Offer it to Krishna. No more own business. And I'll come to the kitchen. Yum, 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 yum. In fact, she made three pies yesterday. And there were guests there. And we all had a piece. And there were two, two pies left over. So before going, please don't tell anyone. I went to the kitchen and stole those two apple pies. And I have them at my house. In my room, ha, ha, ha. That's love doesn't matter necessarily what you're offering, but if it's done with bhakti, that's the beginning of uh, our awaiting our amala bhakti for Radha and Krishna. So that's all the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Not, it's not difficult. You can cook pies for the Sankatan devotees. You can sew bead bags. I need a new bead bag. If there's any Madhajis here who know how to make a bead bag, I need a new bead bag with a um, how do you sew? Uh, sewing of Lord Nishringadev. Like, ah, on the bead bag. Okay? If you do that, oh my God, I just thank you so much. <laughs> Maybe I'll get 20 bead bags before I leave. <laughs> Seriously. And I don't like little ones. I'll show you my beads. Actually, devotees don't generally show their beads out of humility, but these are special beads. These beads are 250 years old. They were handed down uh, from guru to disciple, guru to disciple, guru to disciple, guru to disciple for generations. And one very kind sadhu, Brajbasis, they have very soft hearts, like these beads here. This, uh, these are also 200 years old. Why are you wearing such big beads, Maharaj? This is a gift from Masado, but it's so ostentatious. This is a gift from Masado, from his heart. I'm wearing his heart here on my chest. These beads just, he, this, his gurus, 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 guru. Tulsi, these are from Radha Kund. <laughs> these are from Radha Kund. Radha Kund Babaji's, but Gaudiya Babaji's. And I, I got these beads. If you offer me a million dollars, try it. We have any core parties here? I wouldn't give them. And these V's, this is my heartbeat. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare, boom, 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 boom. One time Prabhupada was walking on the beach in, in uh, Stinson Beach, where I used to surf. Um, he was walking on that beach. He said, surfers are sufferers. Thank you, Prabhupada. And, um, the waves were crashing on the sand. So Prabhupada 
said to the devotees, what is that sound? Kapoom, kapoom. You know, you've been to the beach. <laughs> you have your eye, this is an island, you've been to the beach, right? Kapoom. So he said, what is that sound? So one devotee said, Prabhupada, that is the sound of the waves breaking on the sand. Prabhupada said, no. He said, that's the sound of the gopis' heartbeats when they're feeling separation from Krishna. Sri Prabhupada ki. You see how he's training us, little bits and pieces at the right time. So this is like a heartbeat for me. This, you know, Tadiya means that which is in relationship to the deity or the devotee. It becomes uh, spiritualized. It's material. It's like you take a, a piece of cold steel, you put it into a hot fire, you take it out. It no longer acts like steel, it, cold, it acts like fire. So when sadhus, you know, Gaudiya, Gaudiya sadhu, this is Gaudiya sadhu, Gaudiya vice, Gaur Bhaktas, Nitai Bhaktas, and Dvaita Gadadar When they chant on these beads, you can imagine what is the, what is the, the potency in these beads. We, um, Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they keep their tejas in their beads. Like yogis, they keep their tejas in their hair. You've seen the top knots in Rishikesh? If you cut that off, they lose their tapas, they lose their tapas, they lose their um, spiritual strength. Yeah. And jnanis, yogis, they keep their strength in their words from the Shastra. Gaudiya's their strength comes from it and it resides in their mouth. So you can imagine when these were given to me, I was like, right? <laughs> what? You take, dig, dig, you Prabhupada disciple, you Guru Mahesh, spread Sankirtan movement all over the world. So you can see, if you saw them closely, they're made from the root of a Tulsi plant. Not just a, they're made, how big does the root have, how big does the Tulsi have to be? They're made from the root, you can see. So no problem every day, no. Oh, I have to chant. I get to chant. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama. So powerful. So we've, we've all been, you know, we all have beats. We have beats from our Guru Maharajas. How many of you are, have your beats that you got at the moment of initiation? Raise your hand. There you go. But even if you don't, if you're just a beginner, how many of you are beginners? <laughs> That's me. One time I got Sister Sukha Sujari, she got initiated, and then she lost her beads. Prabhupada chanted on her beads and gave, she lost them. And then she wrote to Prabhupada, I lost my beads, can you chant on some new beads? Prabhupada chanted on some new beads with a note. My dear Sukha Sujari, it's an interesting name, Sukha Sujari. Um, I, I, I've chanted on these beads, this is the last time I'm chanting on beads. You see, because these beads, those beads, it doesn't matter. Once you're initiated into the Maha Mantra, once you get Diksha, when you're putting your banana in the fire, the Diksha is complete. He said, that's an eternal blessing. Wow. I feel that gives me so much comfort. It's an eternal blessing. It means if you don't make it, we may not make it. Vasudeva Sarvami teach Samahatma Sudurlavaha. Krishna says, after many, many, it's nine o'clock, after many, many births and deaths, one finally comes to me. So Arjuna is asking Bhavad Gita, what happens if, you know, to the, 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 the yogi, the soul, when he dies, is he just uh, blown away like a riven cloud? No, Krishna's got your back. It's mystical. It's transcendental. It's an eternal blessing. Next life, again. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare no. But why, why another life? One thing's guaranteed when you're born. Death. Death is never pretty. Death is never pretty. It's always, it's quite embarrassing actually. 
If you've seen you know, a loved one, a parent die, it's very embarrassing. Therefore, the samurai, you know the samurai boys? The samurai soldiers from Japan. I visited Japan, I studied the culture. The samurais, they say, don't ask me how he died, ask me how he lived. Don't ask me how he died. Don't think of a devotee how they died, a car accident, cancer, fell off a cliff. Never think like that. Everyone, that's always embarrassing. Don't ask me how he died. Ask me how, how she lived, how Yamuna Devi lived. The cookbook she wrote. It's the cookbook for the next 10,000 years. And there's no pizza in there. It's okay once in a while. We have to keep our culture. Prabhupada said, we'll take the world over by culture. Saris, Dodis, Tilak, Kantimala, Shlokas, festivals, Ramayan, Mahabharat, farming communities, cows. You know, we may dress in Western dress to go out and preach as a, as a means to achieve the end, but we have to maintain our culture. We'll take the world over by culture. So clickers are good. When I was in the hospital, I, for months I clicked on a clicker. As soon as I got out, my bees. <laughs> so those are some hints. <laughs> we don't have to take birth again. Of course, these children I'm seeing here, oh my God, these children are not, they're special. This little girl and her twin sister, they're so cute. And this little one over here. And that little boy, they're so cute. But, you know, like when Prabhupada came to Detroit, he was walking into the temple room, and my god sister Ch Krishna Bhamani was holding her son, Vaishnava Das. He was just not even two. And he had his little car talk. So Prabhupada stopped. And he looked like that, and he patted him on the head. And then he went, very nice. And Krishna Bhamani, my son, he's a ray of Vishnu. So then Prabhupada got on the Vyasasan, and before he started the kirtan, he looked at the little boy, he said, he said he can do this because he's done it in a previous life. He's simply carrying over from a previous life. So these children who are taking birth, we have to take very special care of them, even if they're naughty. How many of you have, you have had children that are naughty? Be on Okay, thank you, ladies. Your boys, especially. He's got red hair. So naughty. But Prabhupada said one time, when they're young and they're naughty, it means they're going to be very intelligent when they grow older. So I said that to a mother. I said, probably shouldn't have said it right then because her seven-year-old boy was there pulling on her skirt. And he went, see, Mom? See? Mara said so. So they're special souls, so we should, you know, give them all the love and attention that they deserve, and they're, they're the, um, they'll carry on. When we depart, the, the, these children, they'll carry on the movement, so they're the re our real investment. And you can see in their qualities, how they like to color Krishna, you know, paintings, they like to watch Krishna cartoons, they like to chant, dance. The other day I was a little boy at a Bernunga like that. I say, can you play it? How old are you? Five. <laughs> I met a little girl. She was six, I think. I was doing a program for children because I like to inspire the children. So I was saying to, you know, to all of them, so, you know, do you like to play Krishna games? Yes. What's your favorite prasadam? Pizza. How about Gulab Jaman? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, do anyone, any one of you ever have dreams about Krishna? Because what you do during the day, you'll dream about it at night, and they're very young. So from the beginning, there's so much Krishna conscious atmosphere. So I said, do any of you dream? One little girl, six years old. I dream about Radharani all the time. Oh, wow. That, that's a nice little girl. So I, I was going to go on to the. She said, You wanted me to tell you about my dream? <laughs> I said, uh, Yeah. So she started off, Maharaj, do you ever dream about Radharani? <clears throat> uh, no. Okay. So listen. Yes, ma'am. 
I dreamt that I was making sandalwood paste for Sri Radhika. And I had my gopi skirt on because in the spiritual world, we don't wear saris, we wear gopi skirts. And I was doing with the sandalwood and I put a little bit of camphor in, she's like six years old, camphor and I went like this. Then I put some saffron from cashmere in there and some kerwa water, kerwa water, like this. I made it very nice. The whole time I was saying, Radhe, 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 Radhe. I said, okay, keep going. <laughs> so then, then I put it in a, in a golden cup and I gave it to Lalita. I said, okay, where's your mom? Who, yeah. <laughs> Who are you? I gave it to Lalita and she was going to give it to Shiradaka with Vishaka. Because you know, Maharaj, they're the leading Sakis, right? Do you know all the Asta Sakis? I couldn't remember them. So, you know, she went, Lalita, Champaka, Vishaka, Indulaka, blah, That's a good little girl, so. <laughs> you want to give the lecture tomorrow? <laughs> was just six years old. So then, anyway, she went on on the garland. She said, you know what kind of garland Krishna likes? I said, what? Vajayanti. It's five flowers, Maharaj. It goes down to the ankles. I said, okay, that's really nice. No, it's not so nice. We make them for Shiradika because she's Madan Mohan Mohini. I go, whoa, who's this kid? <laughs> and then, um, so I, I said, you know, wow, I, I, I'd love to serve Radharani in that way. She said, you can't. Everybody said, what? You can't, because you're male. <laughs> you're a man. You have to be a gofi. So I said, can you take prasadam with me when I take prasadam? And I... <laughs> 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 so we never know who these, these children are, actually. So it, it's, it's nice to take a birth like that, but again, it means, Krishna says, for one who's taken birth, death is certain. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati made it even easier. As Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is more merciful than Krishna, so the acharyas who came after him were more merciful than Lord Chaitanya because according to time, place, and circumstance, they made the process a little easier according to their generation. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he made it a little easier. He said one time, I see no reason why all my disciples cannot go back to the spiritual world in this one lifetime. I read that in The Harmonist. Wow! I, it, there's hope. If you stick to it, don't jump the boat. Do more than the minimum. Chant from the heart. When you say the prasadam prayers, don't think good food. You think kripa, mercy. When you're with the devotees, you know, Raghunath Das Goswami was offering obeisances to 10,000 Vaishnavas every day. Like that. You, you know, get in the fast lane. You know, we don't know how long. It's not only old people die. Babies die in the womb. So I asked Madhav, I said, what are you thinking about when you're doing kirtan, all your wonderful kirtans? He said, I'm thinking this is my last opportunity to have kirtan. Yamaraj may come at any time. You've heard Madhavas Kirtan, Tyler from the heart, right? This is my last opportunity. So Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati made it easier. Prabhupada, I'll conclude here. I'm also hungry. Oh, you already ate. I didn't eat yet. <laughs> Any apple pies, ladies? <laughs> so Prabhupada, he said one time, on the, it was in Chicago. He's speaking very strictly. Four regular principles, never miss your rounds. Always remember Krishna, no movies. Don't go to the donut shop. Someone said, what's a donut shop? Probably said the donuts, the do not shop. Don't go to the do not shop. He called them do not shop. In America, there's a lot of donut shops. He said, don't go, anyway, made it very strict. So everyone in the room, they're like, oh my God, how am I gonna make it? You know, sometimes I want a do not, <laughs> a donut. Sometimes I, I broke my acodicy, you know. Sometimes I space out in my 16 rounds, you know. So, what am I going to do? Then Prabhupada kind of picked up the mood. He said, all right, if you can't be 
you can't get rid of all your material desires, then at least 90%. Then you have a chance for going back to Godhead. And so everybody was still, uh, 90%. <laughs> then Prabhupada said, okay, 86%. And a few devotees went, oh, there's hope. Most of us were like, oh my God. It's, it's, you know, these desires, they keep popping up in your mind, they drag you, they space you out. You know, if, 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 if we were judged by our minds, I don't know, we'd be really embarrassed. So then Prabhupada could see we're getting really upset. So the lecture was over. And still devotees heard, 86% of my desires have to be gone. And then Prabhupada got up and he took his charter and he spoke in the mic microphone before getting down. He said, all right, 68%, then you can make it. Everybody went, Hari Prabhupada. So Prabhupada has made it easier, especially because he's given us each other. We're a family. This is um, Vaisheshika Prabhu's book, Our Family Business, right? Our family business is to become Krishna conscious together. So our most valuable asset is each other. So we should respect each other. We should adore each other. We should love each other. We should tolerate each other. Sometimes you have to tolerate. There shouldn't be any undue criticism. Sometimes we have to be corrected, but corrections in Vaishnav cultures not meant to be done in public. We're taken before our authorities, everyone has authority, and they instruct us. You know, so we, shouldn't, we should be very careful of fault finding and criticizing. Um, we should be ready to be uh, corrected by our authorities. If someone's deviating, then in private, then they're corrected. This is Vaishnav culture. And we should just honor the devotees. When you wake up in the morning, I mean, this is what we used to do in the old days. I still do it now. I wake up. I didn't dream of Radharani. <laughs> I always have these war dreams. First thing I do, obeisances. And I go, Namaom Vishnu Bhadaya Krishna Vishdaya Bhutale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namani. Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pacha, Nivishesha Shunyavari Pasha. And then I think of all the devotees, even I think of my disciples. Vancha Kopaturu Bhyasya, Kripa Sindhu Bhaya Bhaja, Patitanam Pavanevi O Vishnu. Best way to start the day. Ask for the blessings of the Vaishnavas, ask for the blessings of the Guru, and ask for the blessings of Bhagavan Sri Krishna, and you're off to a good start. Even if you have a bad day, it won't be so bad. You'll still feel warm in your heart, peaceful and loving devotees. And those, that's the type of devotees who want. That's the army that we need to conquer the world with our culture. So thank you very much for having me. I'm sorry if I went along too long, but this is what I like to do. Preach to the loving devotees. And please give me your blessings. And um, come to Brighton. I did it. <laughs> come to Brighton tomorrow and hear about the, how the Sankatam movement started. Oh my God, it's a four hour lecture, you're lucky. <laughs> like Radhana Swami. <laughs> if you're gonna to go to one of his lectures, bring some, coffee, some tea, bring some biscuits, you know, bring some whatever, rascoolas, because four hours, but it's very beneficial. So I don't know, is Jai Patakamara still speaking? Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Uh, please invite me back again. I really, this is a great little, Hall here in the school, and um, yeah, hope to meet you again. All glories to Shri Prabhupada, Shri Krishna Sankirtan Yagya K. Back home, back to Godhead K. Take all the fallen conditioned souls with us K. Vitai Go Premanandi. J. J. C. Radhe. Sharm, 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 Sharm. Hare Krishna.